This is causing all kinds of shit, man. Well, last time we had the worst fucking family get together ever. Awful. <laughs> Just, I'd say family. I guess, you know, Bobby's kind of family since he's a brother in law now. But worst family get together ever. <laughs> and fucking Tony. And Tony finally got his bucket ass whipped. Yes! I'm fucking into it. All right. Let's see what shenanigans are up to this week. Um, no predictions. I'm just ready for the chaos. Somebody might get me getting murked right here. Frankie, get where are you? Frankie dead. Or he gonna be dead. Okay, Frankie dead. Jesus. God damn, man. This is some fucking Hannibal shit. Do I have the right thing queued up? They be doing this shit on Hannibal. God damn, man. Turning me into an angel or some shit. Like, you don't hear that big ass sound when you do. Like, what the fuck are you doing? This has got to be a dream, man. This is some horror movie shit. <laughs> okay, yeah. Totally a dream. Welcome to the chop shop, KG. <laughs> okay. Oh, shit. I was right. Horror movie shit. We're doing this with Chrissy's stupid fucking movie. We're seriously doing this. You know, this character is Michael after the actor who plays Chrissy. Yeah. Probably not a coincidence. Your movie is shit, Chrissy. This is mine too, Shelly. Yeah, you know, what's funny is like the, the the tone just felt so different. It's like I was literally wondering if I'd queued up the right thing. Yeah, it's shit. The investors are pissed. Danny Baldwin took him to fucking acting. School. Danny Baldwin, I thought I recognized that dumbass. The Eldridge Cleaver estate, they want an injunction. <laughs> Listen, you want to see some of it, we're finishing the ADR after lunch. What's that again? Sound them. Don't be using these fucking filmmaker words. Mr. Sacrimony, how are you today? He's happy as always. He's always a cheerful guy, right? Nose, both kidneys. Yeah, and damn, man. So he's going out like this, huh? No, uh, lobectomy, radiation, the goddamn chemo. Yeah, it is all for nothing. At this point, we're looking at stage four small cell carcinoma of the lungs. Yeah, dude, and you're no fucked. stage five. Might as well snitch now, fuck it. Three months. Give or take. I'd rather take. How you doing, John? Man. Gloating ass motherfucker. I understand he's murdered a lot of people and ordered the murders of a lot of people, but still. What did Rosen say? How's the hotel? You all settled in? Don't change the hey, subject, it's, motherfucker. It's fine. You're deflecting. <laughs> How are you, Angel? You look beautiful. More deflected. John, what about Rosen? <laughs> yeah, she can smell some bullshit. <laughs> I don't know, sweetie. Um, Just be honest, man. I'm very, very sick. Okay, oh that's pretty honest. Whatever you want to say about these two. Well, there's nothing to say about his wife. My point is, they the, the love between them was actually genuine. Like, one of the few genuine relationships on this show. I mean, like, it's not transactional. Almost every other relationship, like how Chrissy's relationships are transactional. Even Tony to a certain extent, even with his wife, is transactional, right? This is genuine love. I believe it. And I find that very interesting. He really loved that woman. She really loved him. You know, it's I like that. I mean, I just, it's a very interesting choice. I don't think they're just trying to make it sad, so it makes me wonder where they're going with all this. Maybe he knows where some bodies are buried. I don't know. Can I bum one of those? Yeah, might as well start smoking again. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> My mom did this after her first bout with uh, cancer. It's like, fuck it, you know? After party at some rooftop bar in the meatpacking district. That place is very chic now. Meatpackers? I'm a happily married man. <laughs> One of his better jokes. <laughs> Most of his jokes are pretty bad. That was pretty good. You all right? Oh, Tony said. I can meet a normal guy, maybe. I heard that. What, Finn wasn't normal? Uh, I don't intend really to not. discuss Finn. <laughs> what about that? Screw the movie. I just want to hang with celebs. Why? You think you're going to get to sleep with Paris? <laughs> like, no. <laughs> Who the hell would want to do that? Jesus Christ, man. Why she got... Stop fidgeting and eat your noodles. They definitely got some issues. Where are you going? The bathroom. Jesus. Yeah. Trouble in paradise. Meow. You two have a fight? I don't know. Yeah, because he's a moron. He never does. Listen to him. Check his ABG. I'm going to have to ask you again to not interfere more. This is like Dr. House when he was in prison. <laughs> I 
I had reason to suspect she was cheating on me with her. So you divorced her ass, Devin. That's Jesus. Jesus. Granted, I was abusing cocaine at the time. Okay, mitigating and alcohol, factor, I guess. But I killed her aunt, too. God damn, why'd the aunt catch her straight? What the fuck well, was I that about? I didn't know she was there. Oh, okay. Old. And the mailman. That God point, damn. I had to fully commit. Jesus Christ, dude. Why Keep are you here? Like, exactly. Stop sharing? Like, holy shit. I saw him speak once at an ASCO conference in Georgia. Good man. But, but <laughs> exactly. Actually, very. You got a window of one to three years. What about the metastasis? Two rounds of paraplatin, docetaxel, and platinol concurrent with radiation. Come on, any cancer inside you slow to a crawl. Why are they give me the three months? I want him to snitch or something? Fucking idiot. We tell a patient three months, he lives a year. Who looks like a hero? Oh, huh? good point. The plot thickens. Speaking of the plot thickening, I'd have, I'd have my Glock in my hand anytime I came down for the paper. <laughs> you got a sec? Um, no. <laughs> you always be looking so fucking rough. Brush your hair before you go outside, motherfucker. Our pitch is this, and it's the same we gave to Christopher Maldasante. Oh, shit. We never mentioned it. If you or any of your people ever heard of anything going down, uh, Middle Easterners, Pakistanis, you'd be helping us a lot if you, uh, you let us know. That sounds like snitching. I think there's a word for that. Your daughter takes pre-med classes in New York? She uses tunnels? Oh, shit. Good point. <laughs> Boy, they got, to through. They, they got through to it, man. <laughs> Invoke his daughter's name. That's all you need, man. The last time I'm going down for the paper, <laughs> you tell that fucking Polak to get here early and bring up the paper with her. Or she Jesus. can go clean somebody else's... No reason to get racist about it. Goddamn. <laughs> It's too dangerous. Has been for years. I agree. Somebody could be waiting to pop you, man. So that'll be our last iconic go down to the paper shot. That sucks. God, this movie's. Welcome to the career of Cleveland. Episode. God damn. Story of a much like a child. A film has many parents. Play the movie. Nobody wants to That's hear you to speak, say, motherfucker. Let the movie speak for itself. Act like. That is a uh, film screening one on one. Let the film speak for itself. Sit down and shut the fuck up. Anthony Soprano, everybody. Man, don't be calling me out, motherfucker. Right, go. Once he came on board, the whole thing fell together. And uh, all the other investors, too. Yeah, fuck him. I'm not commissioned about that. Typically, most investors don't want to be... Like, half the investors I use, I never had proof, but I had a feeling their spouses didn't know about them investing the money, right? Like, most of the investors do not want to be called out. They don't want anybody to know who they are. If only for the simple fact they don't want other filmmakers coming. Hey, you finance this, why don't you finance us? You keep your investors private for the most part. Motherfucking son of a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally riffing on Tony. <laughs> yeah, we know, motherfucker. Look at him sitting there in his robe and shit. Hey, keep that shit on silent, yeah. asshole. I mean, he's a good kid. What you need is a man. Damn. To put it in the trunk. <laughs> Shut up, Polly. <laughs> do we really like? Do we really have to watch this Christmas movie? God damn, man. This is causing all kinds of shit, man. That was neat at the end. The <laughs> figurine and the crucifix. Yeah, that was that shit. Was was very that observant. Was. <laughs> <Sacred animal. laughs> Everybody's a critic, right? <laughs> I asked if you wanted popcorn. Jesus, she don't want popcorn, asshole. Jesus. You want me to make you plates? Yeah. Terrible boyfriend. Color me shocked, by the way, that AJ's a terrible boyfriend. Fucking boss, down in the cellar. Yeah, White wearing a robe. robe. Where'd you get exactly. that? I don't know. Kick his ass. Artistic choice. You know how much Imperial Vodka I scored just from this party alone? <laughs> had a couple of cases put down in your cart. Yeah, of course he did. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you how we got the keys to your car, by the way. Brian Raleigh, U.S. Marshal Service. Oh, shit. In terms of your bail, confine you to your home, sir. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Danny? Yeah. Hey, Ray! fucking lawyer! Yeah. <laughs> At least he got some vodka first. I'm very proud. Whatever else happens, you made a movie. That is true, by the way. Nobody can take that away. Exactly, 100%. Let me pause years from now, when... That is 100 fucking percent true. One of the old producers told me that when I made my first movie. And yeah, most of my movies were shit. None of them were successful. You know, never made any money off any of the movies. I never even took a salary from the investment money. You know, I always paid every, because I wanted every dollar to be on the screen. I could live without it, right? I had the means to live without having to take a salary. So I never made a dime off this shit, either during production or after. 
But I accomplished something. Not many people in this world have, have actually wrote, directed, produced, edited, finished a movie. I've done it many times. They may not necessarily be good movies, but it doesn't matter if they're good or not. You fucking did it. You, you, had to, you conceived this idea. It came up with it in your mind from whole cloth. You wrote it down. You got other people on board. They're, you're not paying them very much. And they like the script enough to do it anyway, even though you're not paying them very much. And you saw it through to fruition. You have something you can show people. That is a major fucking accomplishment, man. It really is. And I'm not going to tell you, even the worst movie ever made, I will never take that away from anybody. They fucking made a movie. You know? And so, real talk, like, I'm having a lot of fun hating on Chrissy, but real talk, man, he saw that shit through, man. And he had people helping him, obviously, just like I did. I didn't do it all by myself. Even when I wrote, directed, and edited this shit, I still had a shit ton of help, right? He fucking saw it through. So good for him and good for anybody that's ever done it. I don't care how bad the movie was. And some of them were good. I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just saying, you know, like, it doesn't matter. The quality doesn't matter. You did it. So, you know. Oh, uh, one other thing I want to say real quick. There's this perception from non-writers that writers, and I've seen this, you know, exhibited in many ways. Sometimes people even say it to me. Don't put me in your movie, you know. Neil Gaiman said it best. Real life is never good enough. So a writer will take, like, 10% of something that's true, and then 90% of it's bullshit and completely distorted and completely changed because real life's never good enough. We have imagination for a reason. We're not documentarians. A documentarian will fucking just take real life and put it on the screen. Creative writers never fucking do that. So you may say, damn, they're being mean. No, like, it's you, but it's also, like, 10 other people. Like, you may take a person who trips while walking down the stairs, and they sprain their ankle. And then they go and they, they, they have a fight with their, their, their spouse after tripping and falling and, and spraining their ankle. Okay? And that gets turned into somebody who falls down six flights of stairs, breaks both their fucking legs, crawls into the kitchen, and cuts their spouse up into five million pieces. And then eats them, right? You see, yeah, there is a relationship. There's a causality between what, what happened in real life and what you turned it into. And this is an extreme example. I'm just telling you. Like, this is how it works. You see there's, there's a connection between those two events, right? The real one and the fictional one. But you also see how different they are. That's what writers do. They take this, the, there's a cause out of there's an inspiration, and they fucking run with it in the other direction. Even character flaws. Like if you're a little bit jealous, a little bit snippy, it's going to turn into fucking Tony Soprano, right? <laughs> so, like, it's never, you know, if you have a writer friend, never worry, but like it's, there's nothing, there's, not, there's going to be like one little tiny snippet of you in there and the rest of it's bullshit. It's made up, you know, because real life's never good enough. So, yeah, they're giving Tony, you know, we're giving Chrissy shit about, like, him putting Tony in it, but, like, it's not really that much of it. Plus, Chrissy didn't write it. He just had a few ideas. Oh,